Welcome to Mastering Solutions. In this projectile motion problem, they tell us that a ball is thrown horizontally from a 20 meter high building with a speed of 5 meters per second. We need to make a sketch of the ball's trajectory, and then we have to make two graphs, one of the horizontal velocity and one of the vertical component of the velocity. And then for part D, we need to figure out how far from the base of the building does the ball hit the ground. Let's draw the picture for part A first. We'll say that this is the ball and Initially, the velocity is straight horizontal at 5 meters per second. The height of the building is 20 meters. So we'll say that up here at the top, this is y equals 0. And then down here, the whole delta y is 20 meters. So down here, y will equal a negative 20 meters. So the delta y will be negative 20. Let's just write that, I guess. And with y is negative 20. Now before we can draw either of the graphs, we actually have to solve part D. So it's kind of backwards that they had us do A, then B, then C, then D, because we need to do D first. This is a two-step problem. So first we need to figure out how long is the ball in the air for. We'll be using the kinematic equation y final is equal to y initial plus the initial velocity times the time plus one half the acceleration times the time squared. Now remember that this is the y direction. So the initial velocity in the y direction is actually zero. They say that it's horizontally thrown off of the building. So all of this five meters per second is only horizontal. The y initial we're saying is zero and the y final is negative 20. So now let's rearrange this and simplify it for time that we need to solve for. So y final, is equal to one half the acceleration times the time squared. If we multiply both sides of the equation by two, or in other words, two over one, that is the reciprocal of the one half, so that will cancel. And then we have acceleration times the time squared is equal to two times the y final. We'll divide both sides of the equation by acceleration. So now t squared is equal to two times the y final divided by acceleration. And of course, we'll take the square root of both sides. So let's come up here. And finally, t will be equal to the square root of two times the y final divided by acceleration. So now to solve for the time, we have t is equal to the square root of two times the y final, which we said is negative 20 meters. And we'll divide that by the acceleration, which in this case, because it's the y direction, now it's in free fall, so it's only going to be gravity or a negative g, which is negative 9.8 meters per second squared, of course. So we have the square root of two times the y final, which is negative 20 meters, divided by negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So the time that it's in the air, we'll round it to two seconds. So now we know how long it's in the air for, and we need to figure out how far from the base of the building did it hit the wall. So we know that when it's going in this parabolic motion as it's coming down, this is the trajectory, we need to figure out what this distance is. We know that the y component is in the air for two seconds, and we know that the x component is going to stay the exact same. So the velocity in the x direction, even though it's coming down, it's going to continue to go at that five meters per second the entire time. So how far from the base is it? Well, it's going five meters per second for two seconds. So it will go 10 meters from the wall. If we look at the units, we have meters per second times seconds. So we'll be left with meters. So the answer for part D, of course, as we just said, is 10 meters. Now let's scroll down and give us a little bit more room so that we can draw our graphs. We need to draw a graph for the x component, and then a graph for the y component. So now that we've solved for part D and we've drawn the trajectory for part A, now we can draw our graphs. And so we already talked about that the x component of the velocity does not change for the entire two seconds. So we can draw a straight line for two seconds, and this is the graph for the x component of, of the velocity. It's five meters per second for two seconds. To draw the graph for part C, it's just a little bit trickier, but not much. We're going to take a time and we're going to plug it into the acceleration formula. 
Acceleration is equal to the change in velocity over the change in time. So if we isolate it for the velocity, we'll multiply both sides by t. So we have velocity is equal to acceleration times time. The y component for the velocity is free fall. So the acceleration will be negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So we can just plug in a time here and that will tell us what the velocity will be at that second. So at one second, we know that will be negative 9.8 meters per second squared. At two seconds, it's two times negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So that will be 19.6. So down here we have negative 19.6. For a half of a second, it'll be half of negative 9.8. So we'll have negative 4.9, which is right there. So you can see that our graph for part C for the y component of the velocity is also a straight diagonal line. The slope of the line will give us the acceleration. Since the acceleration is gravity, which is always going to be constant, it makes sense that it will be a straight diagonal line because the acceleration is not changing. So here are all your answers, the two graphs, the trajectory for part A, and then how far is it from the base of the wall when it hits? It is 10 meters.